in this tutorial I will show you how I created this World War II timeline animation for my Patreon. By the way, I've got lots of other cool templates and project files on my Patreon, so check it out at patreon.com slash So let's begin with the background. Let's switch off all the layers. I've created a simple solid layer, layer new solid, and added a gradient ramp with this green color. This green goes from the left to the white on the right and it creates such a subtle gradient, military style. And this layer is not a 3D layer, it's a 2D layer. Then I've added a papyrus texture and added a blur to it. It looks like this. Also, I've switched the blending mode of this layer to overlay. To add the fast box blur, go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur, and set the radius to 20, iterations to three. Also, this layer is a 3D layer, so if we open the position, the Z position is set to 200. If we increase in the position, it goes further from the camera. By default, it's zero, so it means that I've pushed this layer a little bit further from the camera. Then goes the... it's a road layer. It's a photo that I took from Unsplash. I've also switched it to overlay. It's a 3D layer with the position of 343 and it's black and white. I've applied black and white. It's effect color correction, black and white with these settings and added a fast box blur. And it looks like this. If we disable all the effects, this image looks like this. And then it goes black and white and fast box blur. As you can see, it retains the colors from the background. You see, the background looks like this. Then goes the black and white papyrus texture. It still adds the texture, but the colors remain the same. Then goes the aerial shot of the road. Again, it adds the texture, but the colors remain the same. Then we'll add one more image. This image of dunes. Again, I took it from the Unsplash and added black and white and fast box blur to it. By the way, the position is 343 here. This image, again, is overlay in a blending mode. And its position is 197. As you can see, this image is a little bit closer to the camera. I have to turn it on, of course. This image is a little bit closer to the camera than this image. And what I'm doing with all these images is I am creating a texture that's distributed in Z axis, meaning when camera shifts, this texture is parallaxing and it looks way more complex than just a 2D texture because all these textures shift with different speeds during the animation. It's like you're looking through the translucent glass, frosted translucent glass, something like this. Then I've got one more layer. Take a look at this one. This is a map. This is a World War II map of Kiev, uh, made by Germans. As you can see, this map has a map grid and lots and lots of details with houses, railroads and such. Well, I used to live somewhere here. This layer is also black and white as all the previous layers because I want the green color of the background remain here. But the blending mode is set to screen and it's important because if we set to overlay, it's gonna be very dark. But screen makes it brighter and it adds these fine details to the texture because all the textures that you've previously seen, they were blurred and they have added big chunks of texture to the image. But this one layer adds a very fine texture and that's what we need. The position of this layer is 243, meaning 
all these layers are approximately somewhere close to each other. We do not want to make this parallax effect way too obvious, we want it to make like a quiet thick frosted glass. Then I've added a World War II timeline text with a blending mode lighter color. It's very similar to normal. We can just leave it at normal. The position is this one, meaning it's closer to the camera, it's above the glass, and I've added the roughened edges to it. I'll turn on the camera so we can see it. I wanted to mimic the World War II documents, so to say, as they are typed on the typewriter and the typewriter doesn't have perfect edges. It has quite rough edges, so I've added this effect. To add this effect, go to Effect, Stylize, Roughen Edges with these settings. Also, I've added a fast box blur because ink from the typewriter, it's uh, spreading in the paper and it blurs the words a bit. So here they are. Then uh, we'll take a look at the timeline raw a little bit later. Here's how it looks like. Its position is zero, meaning it's the closest to the camera of all the layers. And then I've added a vignette, take into account that this layer is not a 3D layer, it's a 2D layer. It's just a simple curves effect applied to the adjustment layer. To apply this effect, curves effect, go to effect, color correction, curves. And then I have added the camera with the null object as a camera controls. This null object is a 3D layer and I have parented the camera to this camera controls layer. The animation is quite simple. It goes from point A to point B in a position till the end of the timeline. And the rotation is a little bit more complex because I've rotated it in three axes. No, in two axes. I didn't rotate it in Z, but I have a keyframes for some reason. Should delete them. But as you can see, it changes in X and Y rotations throughout the animation. It goes from more inclined looks to more flat as like if you're watching on a piece of paper from top down view. And now let's take a look at the timeline raw composition, which is this layer here. In the timeline raw composition, I've created this images. I've just imported the image and placed it here with the image alpha. Image alpha is just a square, a shape layer square that uh, I've created and uh, I wanted all the images to be somewhat equal in size. This image, this and this are equal in size. This one had to be a little bit more wide because I had to place all the ship inside. All these alphas have rough and edges because, well, we are mimicking the newspaper of that time. As you can see, the edges look like this. They're a little bit blurry, a little bit rough, looks cool. And these images that are below the shape layers, I have applied them with a track mat, alpha mat, image alpha. So it takes the alpha settings from this image alpha layer. And this image alpha layer is just a white square. You can create it with the help of rectangle tool and I place it here. And then below it, I've just placed a few layers with the text. So the text layers is 1939, Germany invades Poland. These two are in Arial font. And this one is Montserrat font, but you can pick any font. And I've described in short what's going on in here. And these are the real images, by the way. These images are the exact copies of this one. They just uh, slightly adjusted in size. Only this one is slightly adjusted in size. And these ones are just straight copies with different texts and dates. That's all. If we take a look closer to them, they're just an alpha, an image, and the text. Then again goes the alpha, the image, and the text to make these dots. I first have to find them. Time points. Here they are. They are made with the help of ellipse tool. I've just made a white circle 
and added Fastbox Blur to it with Blur Radius 2. And I've duplicated it to all the images. And what's the most interesting is here is this timeline line, timeline light, I called it. It's just a layer, shape layer, that goes through the two points like this. And what's the most interesting here are the effects that I've applied to it. It's glow. By the way, the stroke by default is this color and the stroke width is two pixels. Here are the glow settings that I've applied to this straight line. It begins with a threshold 60, classic, glow radius 3, intensity 1, quite intense and with very low radius. I'll show it to you. Here's how the line looks without any glow. Here's the glow 1. You can barely see it, but it's there. Then goes the glow 2. It adds more glow outside. It goes with 15 glow radius and intensity 1, same intensity. And then glow 3. It adds the most of the glow, but it's based on all the glows that were before it. Same threshold 60, glow radius goes to 30, so it doubles this radius. And intensity is still 1. Looks quite good. I like it. To animate this line, I've added trim pass effect. I've animated the end of trim path from 11% to 100% at the very end. And here's the evolution. It goes from left to right. By the way, the composition size is 6000 by 1600. 24 FPS, 30 seconds long. And this composition is 4K, 24 FPS, 30 seconds long. Except for the trim path, I've also added the taper effect. And with the taper effect, it works, by the way, only for the stroke. I've set the start length to 90% instead of 100. And it tapers off on the beginning. You see it's more thin here and it goes thicker towards the end. And at the end, it's the most Thick. The wave and dashes effects are not doing anything here, I just forgot to remove them. Here are all the controls from the layers here. Thanks for watching! Like, subscribe and check out my Patreon to get access to lots of cool stuff. Also check out this stylish timeline animation tutorial. This timeline is way more colorful and cheerful. Bye.